because Adam Traub is the director of the library, Chris Bilo is here as the Parks and Rec Commissioner, and my good friend Ali McGuire, who's our town clerk tax manager, they are representative department heads of the three most trafficked facilities in town. And I just think as the board is deciding, if you want to call that, which way do we want to go, it might be interesting to hear your insights of what are you seeing the last couple of weeks and whatever at your facilities that might influence how we want to go about this in the town. So Adam Traub, our new library director. Hi everyone, I'm Adam Traub, I'm the new library director. Thanks Tom for having me and for juggling the schedule. Um, so uh, in the library, I've been there since January 3rd. Um, right about now, we are seeing about 10,000 patrons a month. Um, in 2019 levels, we were about double that. We were seeing about 20,000 patrons a month. That's pretty consistent uh, across um, Monroe County. Um, for those of you who know me, I used to be the associate director of the Monroe County Library System, which supports all the public libraries in the county. Um, as of uh, yesterday, we're at about 71% of what we would see on a normal Wednesday. So the reason I'm kind of saying that is to set the context of the volume of patrons we see. So we're at 71% of what we saw on the Wednesday of February break in 2019, which is, you know, in my opinion, really good sign. We're on an upward trajectory. We're getting back to normal numbers. Um, since the mandate has been dropped, uh, we're seeing about a 60-40 split of people wearing masks or not wearing masks. It's a mix of uh, seniors and um, uh, adults and children. We're seeing a lot of seniors right now because we have the AERP volunteering to do tax prep. So we've got a lot of people who are you know, choosing to wear masks. Um, you know, we're not uh, checking vaccination status, of course, anything like that. Um, but basically, we're seeing a, 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 you know, it's almost 50-50, but not quite, kind of 60-40 in favor of people wearing masks right now. And the staff right now, uh, I have asked to wear masks because those people who feel comfortable without them can come in, you know, they don't care if I'm wearing a mask or not, right? But those people who are wearing a mask feel a little bit more comfortable. And ultimately, libraries are spaces for everybody. That's true for people who are vaccinated, people who are unvaccinated. Somebody who wants to wear a mask or doesn't want to wear a mask. We are for everybody. Um, and so, as a result, to make that safe space for now, the staff is wearing the mask. But, you know, we haven't had any issues since the mandate's been dropped. Um, and, you know, people seem pretty happy. I mean, like I said, we're at 71% of our normal visitors, um, so we're seeing that uptick. Thanks. So let me ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. Yeah, no um, what would your What would your actions be if one of your staff decided they did not want to wear a mask? So I have two staff who don't want to wear a mask, um, and they, they actually came and talked to me this morning. Um, they, you know, we talked it out. They asked what my metrics were. They said, hey, we're going to do whatever we want. And honestly, when the town first relaxed it, you know, when the state did, uh, you know, I sent an email and I said, respect everybody's choices. Um, and they decided not to wear a mask for those two days before we kind of came to a team consensus about, yeah, we're going to help the public. Um, and I should say, when we're not helping people, I've told staff they can wear it or not wear it. It's whatever they're comfortable with. Um, so if they decided not to wear it right now, um, unless they were helping a patron, um, that's totally within their choice, and I'm fine with that. Does so that answer your question? Let's say they are helping a patron, and yeah. they don't want to wear a mask, and they have the individual right, in my opinion, not to wear a mask. What action do you take? Well, that could be true, but you know, technically we're still their employer, and, and we still set the boundaries for that you know, right. environment. And the, and, and, and the town is not mandating masks that's, anymore. Right, but, that's but what you're, saying, you're telling me the library is them. I'm asking staff when they're helping patrons to wear a mask, yeah. So it just seems to be contradictory. Um, and, uh, and I will say this, and this is you know, it's funny, we've had two meetings, Ginny is the liaison of the library uh, as of January. We've had two meetings, January and February. And Adam and Ginny and I, and uh, actually Amy probably library work, We've been discussing a lot, John, you know from being the liaison of the library, the, uh, I don't want to call it confusing, but you answer to, in a lot of ways, the state education uh, department. Yes, state library. Um, so, I, I appreciated what you said at yesterday's meeting, is that you're trying your best to, to 
defer to what the municipality's decision is. That's correct. And I really do appreciate that, so you know, before, but I appreciate the rock and a hard place in a lot of ways, right, because the school, for better or for worse, whether we agree with it or not, is still under the mask policy, but they've been somewhat wishy-washy or whatever on what they say to the library. So anyway, Chris, Rec Center is a little bit of a different venue than the library. A little bit. So um, I did pull some numbers since from January uh, up until the to now, just in regards to kind of see what our daily visits look like, so we could kind of track and. As an example, in January, obviously the mask mandate was in place. We had an average of 140 what I'll call swipes per day. So people that actually swiped their fitness card or swiped a, a program card. That doesn't count the people that came in for senior lunch or those kind of those kind of programs or even a, a Sunday basketball league. That doesn't count that. Those are people that were going into the fitness center or had a program card because they were in a, a fitness class. So we had 140 average swipes per day. Starting in February, so again, roughly around the time that the mask mandate was lifted, that number went up to 172. So we picked up around, we're going about 30, 32 more swipes per day, basically the month of February. Attributed basically to the fact that now people can come in, work out, don't need to take a fitness class, wearing a mask. And we're seeing that throughout the building. Um, Adam 60 40. I'm probably reversed. I'm probably 40% are wearing a mask, 60% are not. Those 40% that are wearing a mask typically are our seniors or there are real little ones that are in programs. People that are coming in um, for fitness programs or in the fitness center, it's the high majority of those people are no longer wearing a mask. And then, and actually, Dolly, but we also have Josh. Other people that are department heads out of town hall, but I know with, after February 10th, it's kind of funny to Governor Johnson because in your busiest time was February, February 10th prior with taxes. Right. But since. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't aware that we, I was going to have to speak. So Sorry about that. I don't have any numbers to, bring, to throw out at you. Um, I mean, we have been busy since February 10th, obviously not at that same time. Um, I'm not always at the counter, so I don't always see the traffic that's coming in. Um, but I have seen very few people wearing masks. I haven't heard any negative comments from the residents about mask wearing. Um, that's all I really have to share. And, and thank you. And I, I should have known it's 542. So we're 12 minutes in. So I, I don't, here, here's how I'd like to sum this up. And Charlie, you walked in a little bit late. It, it's really, we either can do something dunk pro tunk on Monday or next Thursday to basically go back to February 10th because what we're doing right now is our own policy. This is not the health departments. This is not the state. Uh, we thought we were just going back to what the health department state said. Well, they, they have, there is no anything. Like so we either can do that or, and I don't think there's any resolution in, in this. I know where you stand on this, Jeff. I can pretty much guess you'd say, take the signs down tomorrow. Now that we've caught the air, just take the signs down. I don't, I, I would cite this. I would say after looking at all this stuff, I would advocate for taking the signs down. I also want to figure out how we go about creating a culture where respect people. Respect them if they want to wear the mask, respect them if they don't want to wear the mask. And I'm not, quite sure, maybe there is a marketing PR with another sign that says something like that, but that, we'll talk about that later. Bill, how do you feel? I don't think we need masks. Well, then, I'm, am I interpreting that that you think we are doing our own town? Yeah. Look, so we're taking the signs down, we caught the air, take it down. I don't think we need to do a resolution on something. Jenny? Best, let us know. So, you know, whatever it's like, if Adam feel like he wears a mask to protect his future, you know. Um, Adam has a reason to wear it. Yeah. So, <laughs> more if than it's okay. us. I mean, if anyone, if people have an underlying, you know, uh, 
whatever personal, and they feel like they wanted to wear a mask that is shot yet. I mean, we, I know we try to set them off, but the individual have the right to, to you know, apply for it. As long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. That's what I, that's what laws are for. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this train left the station? The, the train has left the station because I'm one who actually thinks that asking is a responsibility to each other to keep, keep, keep us healthy. Um, I do still wear one, but I also understand that we are a governmental agency and we really can't fly in the face of what is being unmandated across the state, if you will. We had to follow it while it was mandated, and now that it isn't, um, I think that we probably can't enforce it. I wish we could put up a sign that says, you know, masks are optional, respect each other, and make everybody feel better about that. But as we discussed today, that's not going to change people's feelings. So, um, you know, I will continue to wear a mask in public when I feel it's necessary, and uh, I understand that there's strong feelings on the other side. I, I guess I, I wouldn't be for a resolution that we adopt our own policy. And that's the it's really the bottom line. Yeah. Can't be lost in this. Uh, you know what? Um, we're going to be right on schedule for the 550, which was directed to uh, Katrina, just in reverse order. I'm going to sum it up by saying this. Um, there may be an opportunity to do some signs. We've got some creative people here done nice signs on the doors and whatever. For what you exactly said, okay, it's not going to solve the problem of the world. But the one thing that I've found during this is that I don't want people not wearing masks to feel like they're pariahs, a scarlet letter. But I don't want people that are wearing masks to feel the same way that they're pariahs or scarlet letter. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this, well, something that turned the tide on this for me, since Brayton brought it up, was I was in the coffee room, you know, and one of our employees, nameless, I went in town hall, I said, hey, you know, I, I like your mask. I think you wear the mask because it's, it's fancy. I was just making a small talk. And this employee said, no, um, my fellow employees know that I, I'm not vaccinated, and I won't get into the reason why I'm not. But because I'm not vaccinated, the rules as of February 10th is if you're not vaccinated, you got to wear a mask. So she's wearing a mask, and she used, and I said, she. Um, and she said, so I've got that scarlet letter. And that really resonated with me. For any literary people, I don't want anybody in this town, employee or visitor, to feel scarlet letter. And to me, you want to wear the mask, and Adam, I know why you're wearing the mask, and that's not something I'm going to tell everybody else. That's your personal reasons. Thank you for confiding them in us at the meeting yesterday. But you shouldn't have to explain why you're wearing the mask. And really, Chris, you're not wearing the mask? You shouldn't have to explain. So maybe there is an opportunity for some signage that says, this is how we feel the culture of this town. You do you, and we'll respect you either way. So but one thing I think I heard loud and clear here is that we caught the air, and the town is not interested in, for the first time in two years since COVID started, going off the queue of the state and the health department and doing our own local law. That's what it would be. Essentially, okay. law or would be just a practice or a policy. Right. So, I will communicate with the department heads if the board is okay with that. That the signs are coming down. We'll explain why, um, and we'll go from there. So, thank you.